e-cigarettes, vape pens, e-hookahs. These are all different names for a highly addictive habit that has become an epidemic among young people. A tool that was supposed to help adult smokers kick their cigarette habit is now a $9 billion industry that's getting a whole new generation hooked on nicotine. In 2017, nearly 12% of high school students vaped. And in 2018, that jumped to nearly 21%. And in 2019, almost 28% of high school students admitted to vaping. Youth use is a problem that should be addressed. Recently, the government issued a temporary ban on e-cigarette flavors like fruit, candy, and mint. But parents, school teachers, and lawmakers say it's not enough. With 64 confirmed deaths and hundreds more under investigation. A major new study finds vaping raises the risk of chronic lung problems, asthma, and heart disease. But an even bigger concern for researchers is what we still don't know about vaping. Well, I want to bring in family physician, Dr. Uh, Jen Cottle. Can, where is Dr. Jen? Here she is. Oh, look at you with your, your, your coat on today. I, know, I'm I love it. Because, for you. Well, thank you, thank you because you this know. is a major medical oh, issue. Is. What are you seeing in your practice, Dr. Jen? Well, I'm a family physician, um, and I'm seeing vaping all over the place. I mean, you know, we ask kids and adults, do you drink, do you use drugs, do you smoke? Now I'm asking, in addition to those questions, do you vape? And to be honest with you, I have adults that vape. I also mm. have kids. I have uh, young adults that vape. And it's rampant, quite honestly. How does using an e-cigarette, vaping, juuling, all of it, how does it impact a developing adolescent brain? Yeah, so it, it impacts the developing brain uh, tremendously. We're looking at a brain here, the prefrontal cortex. There's a lot of things that's happening in that developing brain. First of all, nicotine is highly addictive. It can affect um, focus. Uh, attention span, concentration, impulse control, even learning abilities, and also the mood as well. So there's many, many, many ways um, that, that kids are affected by, by nicotine. Wow. So do you know the long-term effects? That's where it gets really scary. And to me, this is probably the scariest part, is we don't know. We don't have a lot of long, if, 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 if much at all, a lot of long-term data on what really happens you know, down the line. I, do you find in your practice that, that kids that admit to vaping don't even think about it as the same thing as having a cigarette? They don't mm. think about it as the same thing. I've, I've talked to parents who actually think, who know their kids are vaping, who think that, well, that's safer than using cigarettes. I mean, no, I mean, and I've, you know, talked about it a lot, um, that there is this sort of myth that vaping is safer than cigarettes. We think that in some cases it could be, but safer doesn't mean safe. And, and remember, let me, let me actually say this. Dr. Jen is on fire today. Well, I mean, you know, this is an issue I really care about. The one thing I haven't said that I really should say is that e-cigarettes are in no way, shape, and form indicated for young people. They're not even approved for young people. So when I talk about they may be safer, but they're not safe, I'm talking about for the adults because wow. that's the only person it's indicated for. They were never intended for underage people to be using ever in any sort of circumstance. So we need to be clear about that. Wow. Well, thank you for sounding the alarm. When we come back, a father desperate to save his son from a vaping addiction and the intervention he's been hoping for, and it's happening today. We'll be right back.